basically we are into financial inclusion uh, we as a company provide end to end solution for the financial in institutions uh, to reach the people in the rural hinterland basically it's for the branches banking presently in india we are working with most of the bank approximately more than 28 banks and seven insurance companies for taking out their products to the rural hinterland so whether it's urban inclusion or the rural inclusion we are into that and uh, working with the ministries uh, with different ministry of rural development ministry of finance for uh, electronic benefit transfers the schemes we have in india where the government wants to distribute the money to the end beneficiaries so we help them to do that with uh, reducing the leakages in the system so uh, i'll just show you a small video which will define what we are doing in india and then i'll take you to the international This is the story about India, the real India, where almost 70% of India lives. This is the village of Kanhaiya, a son of the soil. He earned enough for his family, but wanted to save some for a rainy day too. The closest bank did not seem like a convenient option. So Kanhaya remained unwise with the money. There never seemed to be enough. Kanhaya didn't have the power of financial planning. He was and always will remain poor, it seems. And this is the story of his entire village. They thought they didn't matter. No one was listening. Their lives were on a prayer. But there was someone who was listening and cared. Fino Man. The smart provider with smart banking solutions worked out a brilliant plan to take the banks to the people. He had the technology and just the right trusted man for the job, Bandhu. And he had the blessings of the Reserve Bank of India and banks too. Meet the empowered Bandhu, the friend of the folks the answer to their economic woes. <laughs> Kanhaya had now become the first smart investor in his village and soon the entire village followed. Bandhu didn't just promote savings but also gave other services like loans, remittances and insurance. Soon there was more money required for larger projects the villagers wanted to do collectively. Through Fino Man, Bandhu helped groups of people to raise funds for the projects. With the help of Fino Man, Bandhu also helped the villagers set up self-help groups and joint liability groups. Fino Man also empowered families towards greater security with health insurance and cattle insurance. And soon the convenience of banking in big cities was there in Kanhaya's small village too. And now the opportunity of creating a new breakthrough with Aadhaar the simple folks don't understand why they need both the Aadhaar and the Fino smart card for identification and transaction separately. There is some confusion. Enter Fino Man to the rescue. Always full of ideas, he found a solution to simplify transactions by linking the UID with the bank account, making it a one-point identification and financial transaction solution.
Fino Paytech's award-winning business model serves the most underprivileged and inaccessible regions of the country. With thousands of transaction points across hundreds of districts, with millions of kanhayas impacting a vast region of our country, a financial revolution to unlock prosperity by Fino Paytech is underway. Fino, the smart partner to take banking to the last mile. Fino, India's financial inclusion partner. Thanks. This is a small video of what we are doing in India, and the same thing now we are expanding across the world also. What we have seen across the world, the financial inclusion is a big challenge, especially in the African countries where we saw that 80% of the people didn't have the financial inclusion services. So what we saw, the challenge, and the challenge remains the same. So for that, uh, we have provided uh, basic solutions, uh, which will take care of the banking, the government payments, the insurance. So we help both the government as well as the banks to reach these guys. That's it about us. Thank you. Any questions for Fino? Uh, I'm Francis Mtonji from Uganda. I saw Uganda also in the map of where Fino is. And I must say, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it is invisible there. However, what I wanted to ask about is how Fino helps, for example, in Uganda, and definitely in Africa. And I, 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 at first I was thinking one size fits all doesn't work, because when you talk of Africa, you have problems that are a big range. But solutions are probably applicable on the different problems. So like for Uganda, every bank makes a profit, super profits, because one, on the whole of the African continent, the risk factor is exaggerated, yes. not only by World Bank or commercial banks. Even individuals who go there, even if they are from Gujarat, and they go there, when they come to India, they just say, oh, there are problems, but we are working. They don't say that there are super profits to be made there. Where you get 2.5% in USA, you will get 25% guaranteed in most parts of Africa. So, how does uh, FINO assist uh, in terms of, first of all, there is the banking and insurance and everything is so expensive that people don't afford the ledger fees. They, they, there is a multitude of, of, of impediments. Uh, people, for example, they can have milk they get money, and actually it is in the bank and they don't know what to do with it. It becomes millions of dollars. Because somebody says, I've already educated my children. I have already done everything. What do you tell me about uh, uh, savings and expanding the money or selling any cows? I must keep my cows and keep happy every morning. So how does Fino help in the education and also in avoiding those expenses uh, in terms of uh, accessing banking, insurance, and enjoying it. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have also recently started in Africa. We are present right now in uh, Tanzania and Nigeria. So the, the challenges what we saw in those countries are similar to India. These guys are not doing the banking services. They are not enjoying the banking services. The main reason is the bank for these guys are pretty far off what we have seen. Um, just to do the normal banking, we, uh, in Africa also the person has to shed his entire day wage. He has to go some 10-12 kilometers, come back again to stand in a queue for in a bank for the next two, three hours. One of the reasons these, these guys have not started banking. These guys have got money. They have got little money, but yes, they have got money. Vis-a-vis -vis on the banking side, banks are not ready to open the branches in the smaller villages or the smaller towns because they don't see profitability. With this technology, this will help the bank to serve the micro customer at the lesser cost. This is the first thing where we help. Secondly, uh, when we talk about the agent network, there is a personalized touch with these guys, with the, with the customers, what we saw in India also. Like each agent, uh, normally a branch takes care of from 5,000 to 10,000 customers. But when I talk about an agent, they take care of 1,000 to 1,500 customers. The personalized touch with these guys 
helps them to save as well as it helps for the financial literacy in that region. If you ask me, Africa and India, the problems which we saw is totally similar. There, we didn't saw anything different there in both the countries. I think I hope I answer your question. I, if, um, I have a question. Where do you get your bandhus from, and what kind of uh, qualifications or capacity building is required? Okay, uh, we take the bandhus from the from the vicinity only because that person should be the trusted person in that vicinity. So if this also generates the employment in that vicinity. For the financial literacy and for the education, we have our department internally. We train those guys. There is regular training which happens for these guys. Like uh, uh, these guys have some quarterly trainings and the half yearly trainings. So we train those guys. We don't take people from outside. From that local, local vicinity, we hire the person. Hi, I have a question. Uh, how do you assess the credit worthiness of the poor, especially the women? Hmm. And where all in India are you working? Uh, can you come again? Sorry. Uh, how do you assess the credit worthiness of the poor, uh, especially the women groups and the women who are uh, in the uh, in these villages and in these rural areas? Okay. See, uh, talking about credit worthiness. First of all, what we saw that these people uh, used to save money, especially women. If you ask me, out of 75 million customers, more than 50 percent of my customers are women, and these. Women have money, they want to save it for some rainy day, which men do not. And regarding the credit worthiness, uh, if, if you ask me, uh, these guys didn't have the financial access. So first of all, we have to give them that access to the financial services. Then it comes the second step, when we make the GLGs or SSGs, when we give them the loan. The first step is to give them a platform where they can access the financial services. So after that, if that's there. In, in, the, in six to eight months, we can see their credit history and uh, study their credit history and make the credit worthiness of the person.